painting time since uh, I would say nearly 18, 19 years. I am very conscious of the passage of time, about the brevity of life. There is no way to deal with the brevity of life of course, except I guess paint it. I thought the way to paint day and night would be to make a yellow embroiderer who is embroidering forever this thread. Day and night is a ever changing phenomena, but there is a constant and how to show that constant. Hopefully there is a constant, we don't know for sure whether there is a constant, but we hope there is some constant and I thought the constant could be shown with the yantra and the mandala or the stillness you know of it against the, uh, the motion of the thread. I just want this still center like uh, you know the storm of time and then the still center like in W.B. Yeats's poem, the still center. There's always the dance and the still center. I try to make each a little different from the other. Like this one doesn't have a yantra. Having done the painting, I thought and thought and left it alone for a long time. And then I thought, what should I have? I thought of a horizontal thread running across the painting. Uh, I'm very fond of using a thread. You know, you've seen it in the yogi series also, that there's a yogi running, he's bursting into color. But there is a tenuous thread that his very elongated arm is holding that thread. And you don't know whether he is still holding on to that thread. It's a mystery to me. I, you can't explain all your images. And then I can't get rid of my perennial scissor. So I said, okay, let me have this thread going upwards, kind of defying gravity. And the little scissor there, cutting it. The original scissor that I did 18, 19 years ago came from the imagery of the fates, the Greek goddesses cutting the thread of life. And even in Indian philosophy, uh, your last breath, you know, the god of death comes and cuts the thread. So this cutting of the thread is uh, similar in Greek and Indian mythology. Actually one metaphor for time is the scissor and the other is this river of time. I began to paint it in my 1984 series, Water. Uh, 1984 was the Sikh massacre. We will not call it riots. Riots is when two sides clash. Here, nobody clashed. Uh, people were dragged out of their houses and burnt. 3,000 in Delhi alone, over 3,000. Innocent people, because the bodyguards who killed the Prime Minister happened to be Sikhs. So all sick homes were attacked, vandalized, looted, burned. So it was not a riot. It was a massacre. And for six months we were in the relief camps, my mother and I. We were distributing, uh, you know, not only food items but also medicines. And thousands of people had left their homes. In, and they were huddled in these relief camps. And the trauma of seeing those, what they went through is of course indescribable. But people like us who drove through the murderous mobs to take the relief supplies to these people who suddenly had no roof over there, had no food in their stomachs, were wounded mentally and physically. You know, I had to, I thought painting was the most futile of exercises. Then to get it out of my system, I thought that I had painted. It was like a catharsis for me. So I did a series called World Goes On. And I had never painted death. You know, I'd never seen death on such a vast scale. So I 
the first painting I did, I did a heap of corpses because that's what happened and uh, a screaming woman running away and then I thought, you know, already I'm so depressed with the tragedy, this is going to pull me down like nothing. So I thought if I use the symbolism of a drowning figure and have water, earth and sky and in the water is this drowning figure either being pushed in or floating and in the other areas there are people indifferent to the fate of that drowning figure. So but here the drowning figure was the metaphor for death and in the other areas people are going about their business as they do in life always. So either a woman is combing her hair, she's on a swing, a man is smoking a pipe and people are going about their business. So that uh, water, earth and sky I began to use uh, because my earlier series was very architectural and from the miniatures I was taking away the fourth wall as the miniatures do, looking outside, inside, the linearity adding a tension between my organic figures and linear figures. Suddenly the human tragedy was set in the vast backdrop of nature. So rivers were flowing, trees blooming, clouds floating and then death. The inverted tree is the tree of desire. It's a mythical tree. It's one of the jewels that came out of the ocean when Vishnu, one of our gods, churned the ocean. And uh, in the first part are these box urban structures. And these old people leaning out of them towards the tree of desire, which is a golden tree with green leaves and uh, inverted of course and it's also about youth and age because it's about rejuvenation because in the second part of the diptych a young woman is holding a sheet from where green leaves are uh, you know falling and uh, as a rain. So it's uh, about our city spaces you know where we yearn for uh, green, we yearn for sky and green. So uh, I continued to use this inverted tree and later I even inverted the Varli tree which is this beautiful white tree against Indian red background that the Varli artists sometimes paint. I inverted that as the tree of enlightenment. So in some works I would do this black tree of suffering because the Buddha's journey was from suffering to enlightenment. He saw old age, death, everything and then became the Buddha. So the journey, the starting point was suffering, but it ended in a flowering of consciousness. So that inverted tree became that flowering of consciousness. Trees I've continued to paint uh, uh, because I love trees, as everybody does. But um, this black painting, Prayer for Trees, where the man is lying down, or the Indian red painting, where the man is lying in prayer, the way that, you know, when we go to a temple, if we are, we bow down before the deity or the image or the holy book. But people who are very, very devout lie down on their tummies. The starting point for that was the cutting of this uh, 30 acre forest a mile from our house for the Commonwealth Games. It was sheer land mafia because the stadium was 6 acres. What they cut was 30 acres of ancient forest, the only forest in South Delhi. And it had hundreds of peacocks, which were devoured by stray dogs. It was so ugly that uh, a lot of uh, works like Dharti, you know, my whole series came out of that, where we are desecrating, overlaying Mother Earth with so much concrete. This green woman lying down, who's partly turning brown, and within her, on top of her are concrete structures and uh, the organic form of dharti is overlaid with these linear concrete structures and she's also pointing towards the sky, her green arm, for a better tomorrow. And on that green arm is growing a varli tree. So that came out of that cut forest experience. It was a very volatile situation and a very difficult fight because the Commonwealth Games was about national pride and all. There were undertones of like we are doing something which is not in national interest. But it was in the interest of greenery. And we won the case and uh, 9,000 trees are being planted in that very spot. Mm.
Sohini uh, was a real woman, a potter who lived 500 years back and she was born near Jammu in a place called Aknoor. I've been there and stood in the very river which she used to cross to meet her lover, Mahiwal. There is a trader who came from uh, the east. He came to buy these pots and he fell in love with the maker of the pots. So because he was an outsider, the family married her off quickly to another person. And she still swam every day uh, to meet him. He used to come across the river first and used to bring her fish from the river to eat. And one day there was no fish, the legend goes. So he uh, cut off a piece of his flesh. And uh, when she ate it, she said, this is not fish. And she saw the wound. And she said, oh my God, he's done this for me. And she told him that henceforth it's I who will swim to you. She used to swim across on a pot and when the relative gave her an un, I mean, unbaked pot, she realized when she was in the current, but that day was a stormy day, so she drowned and he plunged in and drowned after her and their graves are still there. It's a kind of Romeo and Juliet story that's become very popular in the Indian imagination in the last 500 years. So much so that films have been made of her, feature films, folk songs, and uh, you know, even the miniature painters like Nan Suk. Nan Suk, who painted Soini 200 years ago, I've used the same posture that Nan Suk used of, of the swimming Soini. Only the essence of the swimming woman, but the reason for using the same posture as the painter who painted it 200 years ago is to connect with him. To say, okay, you thought of her, I'm thinking of her, so it's to connect with the tradition. From the miniature tradition is the way the water is painted, the way the clouds are painted, the rain is painted, and she's the Naika, the heroine, the typical posture from our miniatures. So sometimes you deliberately use forms to connect with the tradition, otherwise, everything in the world would, uh, art works, would be boringly homogeneous. It may be a universal thing like love, you know, but uh, that flavor of the roots has to be there and that's why I connect with uh, these images from the miniature tradition. In one of the works, I've also used an electric plug because in the Sufi and Bhakti tradition, even romantic love links you with the divine. In our own faith, which is the Sikh faith, God is often referred to as a lover. And some of the imagery is very romantic uh, that, you know, I'm waiting, I'm pining for my husband, the monsoon clouds have come and all that. So the romantic love uh, being part of divine love, I thought how to show that. So I use this very mundane plug. For me, she's a metaphor of the human being, any man or woman that takes a plunge because most of us just sit by the river and watch it flow. But there are some, very few who take the plunge, like you are interviewing all these Indian artists and you come thousands of miles and you make connections with us. So that's kind of taking the plunge, you know. So for me, every person has the potential of uh, being a Sony. <laughs>